Main Street, produced by WGBH-TV Boston for the National Educational Television and Radio Center. A view of a typical American community. A view of the slum. This is a typical American neighborhood because it is much like one quarter of all large communities in our nation. Ancient. Crumbling. Overcrowded. and degrading. Streets, narrow and ragged, strewn with filth. Ideal, perhaps, for the horse and wagon, but completely inadequate for today's demands. Buildings beyond the age of usefulness, and beyond repair. Crowded together, denying sunlight and fresh air. Strangling life. Behind these tired facades is even worse decay and congestion. Conditions such as these create terrible health standards. And where they exist, a city's highest disease rate exists. Babies brought up by this heart may develop a peculiar view of life, learn suspicion and rebellion. In a neighborhood offering no diversion, they stand and stand and wait, or go searching for their own excitement. Unfortunately, these sites are not new to you. This happens to be Boston, 1960. But it could be New York, London, or San Francisco. Nearly every city and town has its blight area, maiming its appearance, dejecting its people, a constant threat. But finally, the nation is arising to rescue its unhappy main streets, more and more rapidly, every city is moving against the tide of decay. Aging but sound buildings are being renewed. These in a poorer condition are being raised and replaced by new and exciting developments. But as I understand, they're only making it for the richer people, and they're making it for their benefit. Why don't they make it for our benefit? After all, they're driven people from the houses and their homes and, and their property. It's really a shame. I mean, the way that they're treating these people from the West End, I can't see it. Now, I think that's a damn shame. If someone just going to buy us like a dump, maybe, just to us at home. The West End, 3,000 families compelled to make room for new high-rent apartment buildings. Here, the fruit of progress is anger, fear, and confusion. The North End, sister area to the West End, but not yet disrupted by redevelopment. The low rents and the proximity of both areas to manufacturing and business centers has attracted thousands of immigrants during the last half century. In that time, these neighborhoods have developed into secure villages for their inhabitants containing entire families, age-old friendships, clubs, foreign language churches, ethnic food stores. To them, all these things mean home. Their loss means disaster. I grew up here, and I know that's just the point. These people love the West End. Why are people surprised at that? You can't measure feeling by the age of the buildings. It's the relationships between neighbors and the makeup of the whole area that means so much. We got along wonderful. We had a lot of colors.
So you never take lesson of it. And you never give it any trouble like they say, the power of people is so, never. Wonderful. They get along like brothers. In fact, if, I don't believe in it, but they used to borrow each other's clothes, you know. The boys, to them, was like their brother. They didn't think, you know, he's colored, I'm white. He was Italian, they get along like brothers and sisters. My neighbors where I lived were all Jewish, you know. More, because then years ago, 14 years ago, they were all Jewish in Alice, more than Italian. But uh, they come up to the house and they love the Italian food and we'd be together like two sisters and we didn't think nothing of them. And then they'd invite us to their bar mitzvahs and they invented my kids' christening just like, I mean, we were never thinking that you're a Jew on the first position. We had a long, beautiful. English, Italian, Russian, Canadian, Polish, Irish, Austrian, and a dozen other nationalities. The West End was Boston's melting pot and could teach a lesson about tolerance to many so-called better communities. Like I said, we had everything here. Irish, Jewish, Russian, German, we all got along beautifully. The children included, which is a very rare thing. All right, you know, they get along, they go, even if they're in school, like they'd have to dance and hold hands, and they wouldn't think nothing of it. Where, you know, you get out of town, they wouldn't do it. I know they won't. We're all equal, in other words. I mean, they were nice, that's all that counted. It's just that, uh, I mean, I mean, they have clubs here to go to. They had the TV house, which was up for years. And they have, uh, they had the black school dances for the kids. And they had little chaperones, and the mothers were there, and the teachers were there. And they had the PB house, the West End house, they still have on Boston Street. And then uh, a lot of the fathers here, they volunteer their work. The Jewish, Italian, all nationalities, two, three days a week, they still do. We go to the West End house, and they don't tell you. And they uh, have the children come there and uh, play basketball. And they have guys who stay, you know, trying to. And I guess they keep the kids busy, not to get in trouble. So would you leave a place that you like and the house is good enough? It's all good in a rat hole, I can say. It'd be different than what she wants. She should get out, you know, for her own sake. But uh, if the house is nice, then why should you leave? And if the rent is reasonable, you never had rats. You never had no kind of bugs or nothing. Even my own sisters were two doors away from me. That's all. And now. When you're here, we're all scattered. And uh, I don't think that's right. And if you call that justice, I don't. Before, there was all the kind of people that came to me, like my grandmother, all my aunts, were all in one street for years and years, and their children, and this. But now, like I say, everybody moved out. They went all different places. Every time I go to town, I bump into somebody, they're crying to me. They're telling me that they don't like it, that they, uh, you know, they, they're sorry they moved out of here and that I'm here and I should stay here. The kids can't even cry. 18 months old, they're evicted because the kids go up in the neighborhood. How do you like that? 18 months old baby, it's in bed at 6 at night. I mean, see when I really did take that here. Of course, that's normal. A baby's got to cry. A kid's got to play. You go anywhere. I don't care where you go. If you have 20 years in that building, they don't even, you could drop dead, they wouldn't so. They you know, anything like that. Oh no, over here it's all together different. The police will tell you, anybody will tell you. The workers that have worked here. So it isn't that we're prejudiced, we live here. You know, they say, well, you have to say that. I didn't have to live here all my life. I mean, uh, not that it's a fancy place. I mean, I know they're better for living than this. But if you're not happy, what good is it? Even the slum, what's the, what's the benefit to us? Throw us out of one slum, putting us in another slum. That's what they want to do. I mean, they know we can't pay the rent for this. If you have to make $60, you can't, he can't give you 100 I mean, that, that's what they should figure. Like the old people, this is their little village. That's all they know. They can't read and write like my father. He's been here 48 years, whatever it is, 50 years. And he just knows enough and then what's in. And they can't read and write. They can't take street cars. So everything was convenient. The church is a private door. The old ladies go at 7 o'clock in the morning every day. I mean, out of town, the church is a wall of distance. I don't care what you say. You can't walk it. Food. So, uh, and then for poor people like us, honey, over here, see, we, uh, we go downstairs and I haven't got the money, I'll give you next week. You can get anything you want in groceries around the corner the same way, the druggists, the doctors. See, for poor people, that's why we live here, we think. We feel like a bird, you know, when the birds are flying, we don't know which way to go, yeah. 
It was the, the wrong fucking village. I mean, just sit at home, that's all. But a man 50, 60 will go out and make friends just like that. Over here, see, my father would sit up in front. He had the park right across the street. He don't go to shows. Most times they don't go to shows. They don't go dancing. They, 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 they work or they come home. They eat or they stay home all day. He'd go out and sit in front of the barbershop. All the storekeepers that they know for years. They sit up, even, you know, sit up front with the storekeepers and the barbershop. Anyway, just to, you know, to this a little bit. Even if you just walk around the block, say hi, hello, goodbye. It's a pastime. It's a one show for him. Well, I go in the park, I sit down in the park at night, you see a lot of people, a lot of yap, 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 you know, talk to them, and the day is gone. The West End's outdoor swimming pool and the Peabody Settlement House were always busy. Modern schoolhouses and playgrounds were missing, but strong family ties made teenage gangs unnecessary and unknown. I found the truth that when they know you're from the West End, like you say, they think they're all gangsters here. Whatever they think, I don't know. What gives them that impression? On April 23, 1958, the residents of the West End were officially informed that they must move. Move some other place if I wouldn't be happy and contentious. I'd rather go on my own if I was going to go out. It means to do anything. I mean, it's the same. It's different. But uh, my children want it here. Some were glad they were forced to move. It was something they had been planning to do for years and had put off month after month. But for many, the amount they received for their buildings and the $100 moving allowance created a financial burden for those who could least afford it. Small businesses that could not survive outside of this neighborhood closed, and their owners lost their only source of income. For many old people, the loss of the West End's inexpensive living meant the loss of independence forever. I keep them clean, I wash them. Steps, I the steps, this it is Paul. But they've been very good to us at the redevelopment. That much here, I mean, they gave us better service than our landlord. I got three children, and and uh, I mean I'm I'm on on aid. I can't I can't afford uh, just to go in a place and uh, and pay high rent. I can't do that. I got to go according to my means, and what I have to pay, of course, people ain't going to take me in. 
Because you can't move out of town with forty forty five dollars a week. It's impossible. The rent here was fifteen twenty. Uh, where I lived was twenty five. I had five big rooms, not as big as these, but they were nice. The park, the schools, everything, clothes, the stores, you know, in town, you know, nearby. You know, they just said we're going to place you, but did they think we're going to be happy? We're going to be sad, and everything. They didn't. They didn't worry about that. I didn't think America could do it. That's the truth. This is a free country. You, know? you say Russia. This is as bad as Russia. Look at what that. That's the worst sin that they make. The politician. Midwinter, 1959. All but the most reluctant have gone. Hundreds of buildings remain, standing cold and empty, looking down on a stillness, a silence, new and unfamiliar. Forty acres of skeleton of stone and steel, lifeless, waiting. Hieroglyphics telling of a culture that died a week ago. Decades of exuberant life have left their mark and linger like an echo. When my people move out of the way, my house, you know, people cry. They cry like a baby. When you go out outside the door, they kiss the house like this. They cry. You don't believe that. You don't believe it. You gotta believe me. You gotta put in salvation, you put in this wood. I'm not stupid, I'm not smart. And I'm I know baby. I'm seventy two years old. I know it's better that to throw them out on the street. Like, like, like all nice people, beautiful people. All right, some bum is all around the world, ain't eh, If you got a 50 spoon in the table, one got to be rushed. I believe that. Make it good, and I just take it away from me. I just bums. I feel for the old people. That's all. 
Why, I think it was worse than war for what they what they did to these poor people. They uh, they just driven them out of their homes. Now when I look around, I don't even know my own street. I don't know. I I, I don't know where I'm at. And I've been a resident here for a long and many years. I've been here that I don't even know now one street from another. They all got to look the same. I'll give him $35,000 for one house if I give him a million. I still don't believe it. All of a sudden, they're worried about where we're going, huh? Nobody's doing it for the poor people, remember that? Never. Never, never, never. The West End it was beautiful West End. They're going to do it, they're going to do it, and they'll do it. If they're going to do it, they're going to do it. So they sign, they get them, and they got them. Looks like Rob and Sick Russian. I could see my daughter's bedroom from the house. I could see, and I had the children look up. It was really a pitiful. It was really a shame. I mean, and and uh, those three children really took it in their hearts and everything that uh, they said, "Ma, look at the house that we love coming down." I've been 50 years in the way. We're all friends. No fight at all. Nobody. We know each other like a brother and sister. We go to park and sit down and we talk and nice, no fight, no trouble. Good night, good morning. Everybody minds his own business. So, we're gone, we're gone now. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? Vincent F. Champa, United Community Services. 
What you have just seen is taking place today in most major American cities. Many families, individuals, and small businessmen are being displaced by urban renewal programs, programs which are needed to revitalize our urban centers. Areas like the old West End of Boston are colorful communities, housing people of many generations, cultures, and religions. Family life is generous with warmth, and community life is rich with vitality. These areas, however, are often substandard and not without their human suffering. Some people will be assisted by urban renewal. Others will be hurt. It is inevitable. For some, what has been home and a way of life for 40, 50, or 60 years will be destroyed. Much has been done to minimize the impact of displacement. More must be done. Urban renewal is vital to the economic and physical future of our cities. The human city of tomorrow, however, must provide a healthy environment for all kinds of Americans, for those who will come to live, and for those there now. This is National Educational Television.